YouTube. Thanks for checking out another Fat Guy Builds episode. In this episode, we are doing a two and a half inch leveling kit on this 1500 Dodge Ram. This kit's from AdPow, and you can find it in the link below. Uh, it's on Amazon. Anyways, two spacers. Let's get to it. First things first, lift it up, take the wheels off. I'm going to start in the back because it's the easier version. So you got this PB Blaster penetrating oil. Spray all the hardware for the front and rear shocks and struts so that you can get this stuff apart. To remove the rear shocks, you're going to need a 21 millimeter. Now the shock is out and loose, you can lower the axle. The uncompressed spring length on the rear springs is pretty long, so I'm not even going to play around. So I just went, you can rent these so you don't have to pay. I just use these things so much I just bought two sets. And we're going to use these to compress the springs to, a, to make them shorter. So you're going to compress them enough to where you can get these with the spacers back into the truck. Now that we have both sides in, we're going to jack up the axle. Not, we're not going to undo the spring uh, compressors yet. Jack up the axle and put the bolt back through the shock. Now that the shock bolt's back in and your jack is gone, go ahead and remove the uh, compressors from this side. And then do the same thing on the other side. And there we have it. Spacers. Tightened everything down. So the back's done. I'm going to put the wheels back on the back. Time to do the fronts. So on the fronts, to get into this area easily, what we're going to do is remove the tie rod end. Remove the sway bar end link. Doesn't really matter if you do it from the top or the bottom. I'll probably do it from the bottom because it's easier to get to with a wrench. And then we're going to have to disconnect the top ball joint, which will give us a whole bunch of movement on the lower control arm. And then that way we can slide this out. Spray everything with uh, penetrating fluid. Use an 18 millimeter on the sway bar end link. For the tie rod end, you're going to use a 10 millimeter to hold the bottom and a 21 millimeter to take off the nut. Use a 21 millimeter on the top ball joint, and then that way we can get this flexed down hard. We already have a clear path now to push down the control arm and then pull the shock or the strut assembly out of this area here. To get this bolt from the bottom of the strut assembly, I used a one inch, I'm sure there's a metric version, but I used a one inch and an 11 millimeter for the center and uh, just undo it. Use a ratcheting wrench, 15 millimeter, take off the three nuts on top. As you can see now with all that removed, it's gonna be pretty simple to just pry down a little bit on the control arm, lift up the strut and pull it sort of on a diagonal and pull it out. All right, got it out. So now it's just as easy as putting the spacer right on top of this and then using the hardware to mount the spacer to the top of the strut. So I use the factory hardware to mount it and uh, I just like it better than the hardware that came with it. It's a flange head nut instead of a standard nut. So I just reuse the stock ones. And now we're gonna slide this in and we have to flip the strut 180 degrees. So this used to be the stud going through, you know, the outside 
hole. Now we need to spin it and this is going to line up with the outside hole. This is the hardware that comes with it. So you're going to put one washer on top of each bolt and then we're going to line up, slide this in, line up the holes and start everything by hand. By far the hardest part is getting these lined up and threaded in. But uh, get these and torque these down. I think it's 40 foot pounds. So before we hit the other side, you're going to leave the sway bar loose because that's going to affect both sides. Torque the shit out of everything else, tighten it all down. And then uh, we're done on this side. So we're going to move to the other side, pop it out real quick, put the spacer and slam it back together. Well, it's done. Pain in the ass. So if you're not experienced, I wouldn't say to do this. The product works. It's level. It's higher. But uh, if you don't have two, three friends to help you out it, with the fronts, just don't even try. Just lift the back end and make it like a hot rod, and you'll be good. Uh, other than that, for the price, the lift, the looks, it's all fine and dandy. I don't have any issues with it. But... Install is a pain in the ass, so get some buddies. Till next time, wrench on.